Mm -hmm. If you work in trading the resentment, the frustration or the impatience for gratitude, appreciation and thankfulness, and you keep at it, there'll come a moment where that system switches on and now you're feeling grateful for no reason at all. Right. That's, that's not a bad <laughs> thing because gratitude, the emotional signature of gratitude means something's happening to you, something has happened to you, yeah. you're receiving something or you just received something. So your body then, when you're feeling gratitude, is in the perfect state of receiving. Mm -hmm. So then that means then you'll accept, believe, and surrender to the thoughts equal to the emotional state of gratitude. Mm -hmm. If you're living in resentment, you're living in fear, you're living in, in, in patience, you could say, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm with all you want, and that thought's gonna stop right at the brainstem and never make its way to the body because the body is- your not feeling or because why? Because you're feeling resentment. Uh -huh. And that thought isn't, the, that thought is not consistent with the emotion of resentment. Resentment has a different set of thoughts, right? In other words, once you start opening your heart, it begins to move into coherence. It begins to produce a measurable magnetic field up to three meters wide. Now that's frequency, that's energy. And all that energy, that frequency carries information, carries an intent. So then when you're feeling gratitude and your heart is open, you're broadcasting energy into the mm -hmm. field. A now, frequency. A yeah. frequency. You lay the intent of the thought of your health or your wealth. That frequency can carry the thought of your wealth. It can mm. carry the thought of your health. If you're suffering, you can't, the suffering does not carry, that energy does not carry the thought of your wealth. It carries a different set of thoughts. So then, so then we're teaching people how to self-regulate because if you're going to believe in that future that you're imagining with all of your heart it better be open and activated right, right. and you better know how to self-regulate and you have to know the moment you disconnect from the energy of your future because of some circumstance in your life and you lose that feeling if you're practicing it on a daily basis with your eyes closed then the next level is to be able to open your eyes and do it right in the moment mm. and be able to self-regulate and change the, the frustration from some experience in your life back to the energy of your future. Always remember, your mind is an incredible tool and your emotions fuel your dreams. By regularly aligning your thoughts and feelings with your intentions, you have the power to shape the life you want. Patience, trust and unwavering commitment to this process are essential for success. In moments of difficulty, when you feel like giving up, recall why you started. Great things don't come from comfort zones. Success is all about being consistent. If you're ready to learn how to manifest success effortlessly, you're in the right place. Notice how bad things tend to happen when you feel bad and good things happen when you feel good. The power of your thoughts and feelings is often underestimated. Your thoughts and feelings are your primary tools for creating your reality, not your hands. Your actions need to align with your thoughts and feelings to create opportunities and synchronicities. Learning to see and feel what you want to manifest is crucial. Our thoughts and emotions can shape how we perceive reality, and two people can interpret the same event differently based on their inner world. Belief and expectation hold immense power demonstrated by the placebo effect. Mental and emotional states can impact physical health, influencing outcomes. What we believe strongly can influence our actions, making that belief come true. Our brain's neuroplasticity allows it to change and rewire in response to thoughts and experiences. By consistently focusing on certain thoughts or emotions, we strengthen neural pathways, making them more prominent in our lives Neuroplasticity offers hope for breaking free from past experiences and traumas. Quantum physics, seemingly distant, has intriguing implications for consciousness and reality. Self-directed neuroplasticity empowers us to take charge of our brain's transformation, directing our attention and intention toward a clear vision of the desired future. Our thoughts and feelings directly impact the physical structure of our brains strengthening specific neural connections related to those thoughts. 
Think of your brain like a super tool and your feelings as the fuel that powers your dreams. When you dream about things you want, you're basically creating mental blueprints in your brain. These blueprints are like maps that guide your actions and choices. Now, here's the interesting part. When you think about your dreams, the mental picture might lack the energy needed to turn it into reality. But when you add strong, positive feelings to those thoughts, it's like giving them a boost of power. This emotional charge not only makes you more focused and determined, but also sends a clear signal to your brain that these thoughts are important. Your thoughts and feelings team up to create a powerful force that attracts experiences and situations related to your dreams. It's like creating a magnetic field that pulls in what you want. However, some people struggle to make their dreams come true. One big reason is the beliefs we carry deep inside us. Over the years, we pick up limiting beliefs from our experiences, making it hard for our thoughts and feelings to align with our dreams. If you want to learn how to change that old limiting belief and want more empowering insights to manifest the life you deserve, subscribe to our channel. Hit that subscribe button now and be part of our community. Sometimes, our beliefs act like invisible roadblocks, making it tough to manifest our dreams Consistency and focus are crucial for manifestation, but our busy lives and daily challenges can disrupt this focus. Staying positive and focused can be tough, especially when things don't happen instantly. People often get discouraged when they don't see immediate results. Patience is key, but our fast-paced world makes it challenging. Fear is another big hurdle. The fear of failure or stepping into the unknown can stop us from taking the necessary steps to make our dreams come true. Starting the journey to manifesting your dreams involves setting clear intentions. Be specific about what you want, providing clear instructions to your brain. Emotions are the energy behind your intentions, so it's vital to feel as if your intention has already come true. For example, if you want abundance, immerse yourself in feelings of gratitude joy and abundance, as if they are already part of your life. Imagine your mind as a powerful tool and think of meditation and visualization as super useful ways to make your dreams come true. Let me break it down for you. When you meditate, it's like finding a calm space inside yourself. Close your eyes and in this quiet state, picture what you really want. Feel the good vibes that come with it by doing this regularly, you're basically teaching your brain a new way of thinking and telling the universe what you want. Repeating your dreams and imagining them makes strong connections in your brain. It's like training your brain to get on board with your wishes. Dive into the feelings of living your dream life every day. This makes it easier for your inner self to understand and act on what you want. Now, it's not about being a control freak. Trust that the universe has your back. Let go of trying to control every little thing and believe that things will work out. Make gratitude and mindfulness your daily buddies. Be thankful for what you have and for the good things coming your way. Stay aware of your thoughts and feelings so you can adjust them if needed. Here's a cool trick. Act as if. Act like you're already living your dream life. When your actions match your dreams, it's like building a bridge from where you are now to where you want to be. Once you've set your goals, feel the emotions like they're happening right now. Imagine the joy, love and excitement. Picture yourself in your dream scenario. Feel it, hear it, smell it and touch it in your mind. This creates strong, positive vibes that connect with the universe, making your dreams even more powerful and real. While thinking about your future is awesome, don't forget the magic of now. Feel the emotions of your dream life as if they're happening in the present moment. This is where the real power lies. So when you do this, you're basically telling your inner self and the universe what feelings are happening right now in your life. This sends a clear message to your brain that these emotions are real 
attracting experiences that match them. Being consistent with this process is the key. It's like making strong pathways in your brain and keeping that happy vibe alive. Make this a part of your daily routine. The more you feel the emotions of your dream life, the more natural it becomes. It's like tuning yourself to the frequency of your wishes. Doubt and resistance can be like roadblocks on your way to making things happen. When these pop up, notice them, but don't get stuck on them. Go back to feeling those good emotions and imagining your dream life. Trust the process, have faith that the universe is on your side and let go of trying to control everything. Express gratitude for what you have and what's on its way to you. Gratitude is like a magic emotion that makes your wishes even more powerful. When you're deep in the feelings of your dream life, try to detach a bit from exactly how and when things will happen. Trust that the universe has its own perfect timing. Letting go of doubt and resistance is a big step in making your dreams come true. Recognize when these feelings show up and be kind to yourself. Trust is key in releasing doubt and resistance. Believe that your intentions are heard and the universe is working in your favor. Feeling it to manifest it is all about matching your inside feelings with the reality you want. By consistently feeling the good vibes linked to your dreams, you become a perfect match for the experiences you want to create. Remember, patience, trust, and unwavering commitment are crucial for this to work. So, the more you feel it, the more you bring it into your life. I want to discuss creating identity. I often talk about becoming the best version of yourself because I've personally experienced significant, lasting transformations by becoming a different person. Transformations from trying various strategies and techniques were temporary, providing short-term results. In this channel, I focus on principles rather than temporary techniques. Your self-image, how you see yourself, plays a fundamental role in shaping your life. Many people face repeated failures or undesirable cycles because their internal identity remains unchanged despite trying different external approaches. Now, let's think of reality as a mirror. You present an image to this mirror and it reflects back what you see in your life, your wealth, relationships, and everything you have. The image you present is your internal world, your thoughts, feelings, and attitudes. The crucial point is that the mirror reflects your internal world with a delay. This delay is essential to understand the longer-term consequences of your actions. For instance, if I create this video today, it might bring in more clients immediately or even a year later as more people watch it. So there's the quick result, the first outcome, and then there are second, third, and fourth outcomes. These consequences happen because of any action and not all of them show up right away. This also applies to your inner world. Now, in this circle, I've depicted your inner world. At the core, we have your self-image, the image you show to the mirror, representing who you are now. From this state of being, certain actions follow. What you do comes from who you're being, and as a result of these actions, certain outcomes, possessions or experiences follow. The problem arises when most people operate from the same state of being, wanting something different to have something different. However, if your being remains unchanged, your actions won't last. Your being ultimately influences your actions. So let me illustrate this with an example. Let's say you aspire to become a salesperson, but you resist making cold calls. Your current state of being is resistant. You force the action of making cold calls, feeling unnatural and even painful because it goes against your resistant nature. After persisting through this discomfort, there comes a point where it becomes natural and you start seeing yourself as a salesperson. For many people, the problem lies in the incongruence between what they do and who they're being. 
Now you might wonder if it's necessary to be someone different or can you just do the right things? While doing the right things is valid, consider that getting into a car doesn't require you to be a driver. You can simply do the right things to operate the car. In that example, you can do what's needed and still achieve the results. You can develop the habit without being a drug. However, here's the catch. Suppose you're driving somewhere but don't feel comfortable as a driver. You lack the feeling of being a driver. In each turn, you doubt yourself and become overly alert, leading to self-sabotage and overcorrection. Imagine driving, constantly uneasy and excessively careful, draining your mental energy. This mirrors what many experience in an unnatural process, struggling to ease into who they need to be for what they want. Now the question arises, how can we make this shift from unnatural to natural smoother? This is what we aim for, right? We want to confidently create content, reach out to prospects and sell services without feeling unnatural. So let's explore how to consciously craft who you want to become. Firstly, it all starts with clarity. Understand what you want, why you want it, and who you need to be to achieve it. When you clearly define these aspects, your intellect and emotions align. For instance, if you desire sales success, clarify your reasons and embody the characteristics of a successful salesperson. The second key is to suspend disbelief and follow curiosity when doubts and fears arise. Instead of resisting, allow these feelings to be present without fighting against them. By doing so, you make the journey easier, moving from resisting to allowing. This subtle shift can make a significant difference in your transformation process. So, if you have doubts about entering this field, it's normal because you're going against your usual self. Instead of resisting, let those doubts be there and follow your curiosity. You might question how to know if you'll succeed or when to evaluate your progress. Establish a benchmark, like making 30 calls, and only judge after reaching that point. In my field, maybe it's a hundred cold calls before drawing conclusions. Set a clear metric and avoid premature judgments. Moving on to the third step, it's crucial to ease into and solidify your new identity. Celebrate your successes and accept failures as part of the learning process. When starting in a new field, your mind may naturally focus on failures, but by suspending disbelief, you keep an open mind. Acknowledge your successes, saying, I am becoming successful, to strengthen the new identity. This positive reinforcement helps ground your new self in reality. This process of rewarding successes and allowing failures is immensely powerful in crafting a new version of yourself and transitioning to a different reality. The reflection in the mirror becomes stronger as you consistently reinforce your positive identity. Remember, failures are part of the journey, providing valuable lessons for your progress. Thank you for watching this video. I hope the insights shared here resonate with you. In summary, we discussed the importance of creating a new identity and the smoothest way to transform into someone else. Many people face repeated cycles because their internal world remains unchanged. Breaking free from these cycles requires altering your internal attitudes, even if the external reflection takes time to catch up. Stay patient and don't let temporary setbacks discourage you on your journey. This mirror reflects your inside feelings, but there's a delay. The big issue is relying too much on the mirror's reflection. Instead of being independent, we wait for the mirror to show us how to feel. The core of your internal world starts with your being, and your actions reflect who you are. What you have is a result of who you are and what you do. Being leads to actions which bring consequences, and having is the result.
We explored this using an example of someone hesitant about entering a field, like an introvert trying sales. They might force themselves into action, but the state of being remains the same, leading to unnatural efforts. Success might come, but it feels forced and unfulfilling. To consciously become successful, start by getting clear on what you want, why you want it, and who you need to become. This involves intellectual clarity, emotional clarity, and defining the image you want to reflect. Secondly, suspend disbelief and follow curiosity when doubts arise. Give yourself time without judging, like trying for 30 days or making 500 calls. Lastly, reward successes and accept failures to consolidate your new identity. Celebrate tiny successes to build evidence for your nervous system making the new identity real. Allowing failures is crucial for the journey towards success. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it valuable, leave a comment and let me know your biggest takeaway. For more content, click the like button, comment below the video, subscribe to our channel and click the bell for notifications. See you next time.